Okay, in a binomial distribution, I remember that's a situation that has two outcomes. There's a fixed number of trials. Um, the situations are independent of one another, and all probabilities are the same. Um, we actually can calculate the mean and standard deviation in a different way um, that only works for binomial situations, but the formulas are a lot easier to use than um, the ones with the fancy E formulas that we've been using. And so these are two formulas that are on your formula sheet when you take the AP exam. But again, this only works for binomial distributions. And the mean is n times p, where n is the number of trials, and p is the probability of success. And the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. We also um, record, um, define p as being the probability of success and 1 minus p then being the probability of failure. Okay, so always realize that that's where the 1 minus p comes from because if it's binomial and you know one probability, you should be able to figure out the other one by subtracting it from 1. And so we consider 1 minus p to be the probability of failure. And so these are two formulas that we will use whenever we have a binomial situation to calculate both the mean and the standard deviation. So to see an example of this, um, here's a problem where Mr. Bullard has 21 AP students who are trying to guess which of three, glass water, uh, three glasses of water was bottled water. The other two are tap water. So he gives them three, bo three bottles and says, which one of these is bottled water? Okay, and if we assume the students cannot tell tap water from bottled water, they know their taste buds aren't, cannot discern between the two of them, then they should have a one-third chance of correctly identifying the different types of water just by simply by guessing. So this is a binomial situation because either they're going to guess tap, or they're either going to guess correctly, i.e. this is the bottled water, or they're going to guess incorrectly when they, in fact, pick the tap water. Um, it's independent of one another. Um, I do expect that one student's results are not going to be affected by somebody else's. There's a fixed number of outcomes because you have 21 AP students, so there's 21 students who are going to be doing this. And all probabilities will be the same, and that was what the one-third represents. So again, you notice I still go through the binomial to prove that this truly is binomial. And so if we use these formulas, a lot really easy to calculate the mean. Um, all we got to do is multiply the number of outcomes, which in this case is 21, times the probability of success, one-third, and realize our mean would be seven. We would expect to get seven of those students to get it correct. And it actually makes sense if you think about it. If the probability of success is one-third and you get 21 students, you would expect seven of them to be correct. The standard deviation formula, then, we uh, multiply 21 times the probability of success times one-third times the probability of failure, which is the one minus p, times two-thirds, and we square root that, and that comes out to be 2.16. And so, remember the standard deviation is the average error. It's how far off from the mean we would expect to be on the average, and that's what um, the standard deviation represents. So in this case, we would expect our um, number of students to be off by 2.16 um, uh, at any time. Okay, so what we're going to uh, have to realize is that the binomial distribution is a good estimate for an actual probability situation when we do sampling without replacement. So, you know, if we're picking cards out of a deck of cards, our probability is going to change every time. If you do sampling without replacement, the probability will not be the same. So, in a given situation, if you notice here, the probability here comes out to be 0.3485. If we use the probability distribution, it's an approximate answer, but if you notice, it's a pretty good approximate answer. These two answers are very close. So the idea here is that we can use the binomial distribution, which is a much easier formula to use, especially if we get into the binomial CDF and binomial PDF features of our calculator. Um, it's a much easier formula to calculate, much easier formula to use, and but in situations where you're doing sampling without replacement, you have to use what's called the rule of 10. And basically what that means is if you take your sample size, which you usually use loader case n, and you multiply that by 10, you have to show that the population is bigger than that number. So whatever your population that you're sampling from has to be bigger than that number. So for example, if I'm doing a deck of cards, I know there's 52 deck cards in the deck. Okay, so if I can't, I cannot take a sample size bigger than five if I want to use the binomial distribution as a mean to approximate. Because if I were to take a sample size of six, 
If I multiply by that by 10, I cannot guarantee that my deck of cards has more than 60 cards. So we would not be able to use the binomial distribution format in replacement of what the actual probability is. Okay, so it's not greater, in this case it's actually not, um, not less than 52. Okay, so this is called the rule of 10. It's something we will work on with, um, um, whenever we do sampling without replacement. We have to take our sample size, multiply it by 10, and show that our population is bigger than that. So as a quick review, whenever you're doing binomial distributions, the mean is just your uh, sample size, basically, times your probability of success. And the standard deviation is your sample size times your probability of success times your probability of failure, and then you square root that. And we have to use, um, we will use the normal approximation for this any time both our number of successes and number of failures are greater than or equal to 2. So n times p is the number of successes. And sometimes it's given to us, sometimes you have to calculate it. n times 1 minus p is the number of failures. Okay, And they both have to be at least 10 if we want to use a normal distribution um, for a binomial situation, which means we get to draw a nice bell curve, find our mean and our standard deviation, and use our z-score. So in those situations, we do have to check for this condition and make sure that both of the, our sample size basically has to be big enough in order to guarantee that. So here's an example of a binomial situation. Um, there's a survey asking 2,500 adults if they agree or disagree with the statement, I like buying new clothes, but shopping is often, often frustrating and time consuming. Okay, so we, we run a sample and we find out that 60% of all U.S. adults would say agree. Okay, so the question is, estimate the probability that 1,520 or more of the sample out of that 2,500 actually agree. So um, we want to check to make sure this is a binomial random variable. So binomial, remember we have to have two outcomes, and in this case they're either going to agree with that statement or not agree with the statement. There's no other two choices, so sure enough there's two outcomes. There's a fixed number of trials because we're going to survey 2,500 adults. It's independent, so it would be reasonable to show, this is where the rule of 10 comes in, that if we survey 25 uh, adults in the nation, if we multiply that by 10, that's going to give us a number 25,000. And it's reasonable to assume that the number of U.S. adults is greater than 25,000. I don't think that's a problem. There's probably more than 25,000 in Honolulu, but certainly across the nation, that's not a problem. And the all part of it is the probability has to show that it has to be the same all the way across, and there it's given to us as 60%. So that checks off. So all four criteria are met, so therefore it is a binomial. Now remember, we want to be able to use a normal approximation, which means we get to use a z-score. That's the big deal here. And this is where we have to show that the number of successes and the number of failures are both at least 10. So in this case, we actually got to take the number of people we sur surveyed, 2,500, multiply by the probability of success, which was 0. 0.6, and that comes out 1,500, and then figure out how many people actually had to say no. Well, if 1,500 said yes, that means out of 2,500, 1,000 had to say no. And since both of those are at least 10, we can use the normal curve to approximate this answer. Okay, so that we get to calculate the mean by using our formula, n times p, comes out 1,500. The standard deviation, we use that formula, comes out 24.49. And now we get to use our z-score formula to answer the question here. So the z comes out to be 0 0.82. And if we look up in the table A in the book, we find out that the percentage of people that would um, agree with this if that number was 15, 20 or more comes out to be about 20.6 percent where once again we can use a normal CDF. So conditions two is real critical so that we can actually use a normal approximation which means that we get to use a z-score. So that's a, a critical condition that you need to check for to be able to you, take a binomial and convert it to a normal curve. Please continue to take notes on the worksheet that's provided for you for these videos.